We're going to discuss the Ruckus Cloud Controller, how to add an access point, and also how to troubleshoot AP connectivity. In the description box below, we've included great resources to assist you, including links to our how-to hub. Be sure to check it out often, as we're always updating the content. Here we're on the Cloud Controller dashboard. To reach this, we navigate to cloud.ruckuswireless.com, enter our credentials, and authenticate. Before we begin, let's verify that we have available AP licenses on the controller to add access points. To do so, we're going to navigate to Administration, and then we're going to navigate to Licenses. Now here we can see that we have a 3 AP license available, so we can add access points. One item to note, the software on the access point needs to be standalone or unleashed software, otherwise it won't be able to connect to the cloud controller. One last piece before we start, we're going to go to the question mark and we are going to navigate down to documentation. Here we're going to search for the keyword firewall. This result is going to show us the firewall ports that need to be opened within our network so that our access point and the cloud controller can communicate with one another. If you don't have firewalls installed, you don't necessarily need to worry about this. But further, I'm including the IPs and the fully qualified domain names of the controllers and the white space on the left. This is the web interface or the GUI of our access point. We see that it's an R600. Why am I showing you this, you might be wondering. Well, there's a good reason. We're going to go and verify that this access point model is supported on the cloud controller. To do that from the Ruckus cloud controller, we go to the question mark and we go down to where it says supported AP models. And then this is going to give us a listing of all of the different access points that are supported on this platform. And as we scroll down, we can see here that the R600 is listed. All right, we're going to add a venue. So on the left, we're going to click on Venues, and then over on the right, we're going to click on Add Venue. I'm going to use Ruckus Headquarters as an example, so we'll give that as the venue name, and then I'm going to input the address of our headquarters, which is 350 West Java Drive in Sunnyvale, California. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and click on Create, and that gives us a venue which we can now place access points in. Okay, our venue's created. We see it there, Ruckus HQ. So now what we need to do is we need to go into the venue itself, and we're going to add an access point. We can do it via the APs feature on the left, or we can use the AP function here in the middle of the screen we're going to use that so from here we're just going to give the name of ap1 which is the default and now we need the serial number i've gone ahead and copied this from the ap's gui page earlier which you can see here all right to finish this up we're going to click on create now what we're doing is we're installing this access point within the venue because it's specific to the serial number what's going to happen is the access point itself is running cloud software so it's going to reach out to the controller and contact it so we'll go ahead and watch it as the ap comes up and online so we're going to navigate to ap's on the left and we're going to check here where ap1 is installed it shows that it's never contacted cloud there's a refresh button here you can click that button to refresh the screen and watch the status as the access point contacts the controller and comes up and online. As we click on refresh, we can see some progress. We now see the access point is initializing. I've reduced this for time quite a bit, but as you hit refresh once again, you can now see that it's operational and applying config. Applying configuration has been taking quite a bit of time and it's a little concerning. And as we can see here, now it says configuration failed. Well, let's take a step back and find out why that happened. Obviously, you're going to know this prior, but I went ahead and pulled some info out of the access point just to reiterate this point. We've created a venue in Sunnyvale, California. The access point is installed in India, and it has a country code of India installed on the hardware itself. These can't cross. If you have an access point in India, it cannot exist in a venue within the United States or Germany or France. It has to match country-wise. So we know where the access point is. So what we need to do is delete it from the United States venue. We're going to then go into our existing Bangalore, India venue, and we'll go ahead and add that access point there. At that point, it should then come up and online. From the AP screen, we're going to click on the access point. Now we have two things we can do here. We can go to more and we can click on delete access point. That'll pull that access point clean out of the controller. Or we can go in and click on edit AP. And from the edit AP screen, we can see the venue up top here. We can actually click on that venue. And here we see BDC lab venue. That's our Bangalore data center lab. We're going to go ahead and move it there. And then we'll just click on save. 
Now it's going to warn us you're going to change the venue. It'll disconnect the clients, but that's fine. Nothing's connected to it. So we're going to go ahead and do that and watch it come up and online. The access point's being removed from the incorrect venue. It's being moved into the new venue. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and navigate to venues, and we'll see that we have our BDC lab venue. When we enter that, we'll see here that we have one AP and setup phase. If we go to the APs, it's going to show us that it's never contacted, but we can go ahead and refresh through this page as we did earlier, and we should see it come up in operational. As always, we condensed this for time, but now we can see that it's operational, applying configuration, and then roughly about 10 minutes later, when we refresh it again, we now see that it's operational. Now that we have an up functioning and operational access point, I'm gonna show you a couple tricks and tools. From the access point itself, we can navigate to more and download AP log. This will give you information about the access point, but keep in mind it has to be operational in a venue before you can actually download this log. The information I showed you earlier that showed the country code, this is the file that it came from. Obviously, we hope this is never the case for you, but should you ever need to open a support case, you can do so directly from your controller. Navigate to the question mark, go down to open a case. This is going to open a new tab or a new window in your browser, and it will redirect you to support.ruckuswireless.com. Here, you can input all of the details about your issue and submit that case to our amazing support personnel. Lastly, if you do need to provide support access to your controller, you can do so by navigating to administration, going to support, and here you can turn on allow access to Ruckus support. That will allow them to connect to your controller and help you troubleshoot the issue. Hope you enjoyed this video. Come back and thanks for watching. Before you go, don't forget to check the description box below and access any of the great resources that we've provided. Thanks for watching.